recite it with me, please? A glittery gown turns a frown upside down. The uh, costume designer for the series that I was doing said, there is a movie that Disney is doing. I'm doing the costumes and it is, I think you, all I can think of is you. And I said, oh, oh, okay. And she said, it's really cute. All I can think of is you. And I said, well, great. And then I got a call to do this Disney movie. Uh, and I thought, oh, this will be great. I'll work with, you know, costume design. And apparently they had a, a difference of opinion and it was a different costume designer. So that was fine. This costume designer was terrific. But I, I went there thinking that it was going to be a reunion and it, it, it uh, turned out to be something that was totally different. And, um, but shooting in Boston, um, doing a Disney movie, getting to use a magic wand. There were so many pluses about this thing that were just, you know, come on, come be a god, my fairy godmother. Sing. Alphabet. No, no, sing. Alphabet. Sing. Why can't you do both? Uh -oh. Well, I was doing Kate and Allie at the time. I had, uh, I think my daughter was 18 months when I was, I started doing Kate and Allie. And um, our cameramen were this, the cameramen who did Sesame Street. The studio was two blocks away from our studio. So when, you know, and we, it was like, it was, it was crazy. It was so homey that, that place. We shot in the Ed Sullivan Theater. Billy Persky was our director, producer. Um, and uh, basically we spent a lot of time talking about what we were going to eat. The kids, Susan would bring her son who was six months older than my daughter. And the kids would come and they'd spend most of their time downstairs with makeup and hair. <laughs> And they would they would draw on makeup and hair and, you know, wear boas and stuff. It was just wonderful. Um, but the cameraman said, you should come to the street, come to the street. You know, when we're there and we're there like Tuesdays and Wednesdays or something. And, and uh, he said, you know, bring your daughter. Just, you know, tell us when you're coming or just drop in, just drop in. So we did. We could just drop in. And we brought some of her friends up and the 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 Muppeteers were so conscious of children and how they were going to respond to things and um, how they are going to keep this process innocent. And so every time you walked in there, it was like, "Oh, hi, come on in!" And you know, and they Snuffleupagus would be up in the wings. He'd be, you know, he wouldn't be used that day. So he'd be up there and they go, oh, but he's, you know, that's, that's his bunk bed. You know, you should see the lower bed as you know, that's where so-and-so sleeps. But, you know, they had an answer for everything. And you know, every so often Big Bird would walk by and just sort of sit down next to them and hug them. <laughs> we have pictures that are just, it was, it was a dream. It was just a dream. Great, great thing for kids. Do you know how many dresses I need? Six. None. <laughs> I do not have the life. I keep shopping for. <laughs> I was told it was groundbreaking at the time, but I lived in New York, so it was not groundbreaking in New York, but it was in other parts of the country. And uh, so I accepted that and thought, oh, okay, pat ourselves on the back for doing this. Good for us. But um, the fans, the fans that really got to me were the men, I, I, was, I was in my 30s when I did Kate and Allie, and, and men in their 50s and 60s would come up to me and say, thank you. You make me a little bit more comfortable knowing that my daughter is going to be okay. You know, <laughs> she's not married and, and she does have children uh, and it's really hard. And I worry about her, but I see she, ha she has a relationship with her friends and they help each other. And that just gives me such comfort to see you guys doing that. So that, that was a good thing. Dan, there's an old saying, behind every successful man, there's a woman, a loving, giving, caring woman. But you wouldn't know about that, Dan, because there's no old saying about what's behind a miserable failure. <laughs> it was, a, a wonderful learning experience and, and I had some great times and the actual 90 minutes of that show 
was just so exciting and so fun. And, and you have the orchestra and you had the, the energy and the adrenaline and the, the guest host and ah, it was awesome. The rest of the stuff was really kind of hard to deal with. It was, so I, I sort of pulled back and I, I did the show. But I, I, I didn't, I didn't want to play. I didn't want to play that. So I, I knew if I went up to hang out and, and work with the writers, you know, that they didn't, they didn't trust me because they didn't know me, but they didn't really want to know me because they didn't have that time to get to know me. So the only way I could show them I could do it was by doing it rather mm -hmm. than trying to sell it. Do you know what I mean? And other people were very good at selling things. I'm not, I'm not a good salesperson. Um, and eventually we, we got a relationship, you know, maybe around the third year, which was fine, fine. And, um, and then it, it, it sort of, I got a little bit more comfortable being there because I had more stuff to do, but it was still a difficult thing. It was still a difficult place to be because it was evolving. It's so, it was sort of like being at the beginning of time. And it, we were the ooze that was coming up onto the earth, you know? in television and uh that was a turbulent time how are you gonna pay for the room we shall remunerate with metallic tinder discs i hated those things uh, they were glued to your head <laughs> it was very awkward and uncomfortable but i you know i love dan Aykroyd so much and i love working with dan Aykroyd so much who could turn that down so I didn't, I didn't really, yeah, I thought the Coneheads, Coneheads was, did have lasting power. I did. Because it was human. It, it had a, it had a core. It had a soul. Oh, it's nothing to be ashamed of, Dick. <laughs> this happens to all men at some point in their lives. It does. Sure. At least I think so. <laughs> I wouldn't really know. I've been batting kind of a thousand up until now. There is a plaque on the studio uh, in Radford, uh, in Studio City, um, at the Radford Studios, uh, CBS Studio Center. And it's the plaque uh, that's on the studio where we did Third Rock. And it's just saying, Third Rock from the Sun was shot here. And I haven't seen any other plaques for other shows. And Honestly, when we were there, um, there was a lightness because of that show. Everybody, we would, Cindy Kali and Wayne Knight and I would, and, and Eileen Getz and I would, would commandeer because we had time off. You know, there were other people doing other scenes and we had nothing to do. So we would play. We would commandeer golf carts and go to other sets and go to their craft service and, you know, hang out. And, and then we we just had so much fun. And Cindy would flirt with all the, the security guards. So they'd let us go anywhere we wanted to go. And we'd just drive around and they'd go, Third Rock's here. So they'd stop and, you know, they'd show us their craft service. We'd grab a donut and leave. It was so much fun. We, but we, we used that space and, and, um, because we were we were laughing, it it went out. It it sort of and it was silly, funny, smart. Did Peter have any good friends growing up? I honestly don't remember any. All right, look, Zoe. Just to clarify here, my dad worked for IBM, so we moved a lot when I was a kid. Well, Robbie always managed to have friends. Of course, he probably wanted to suck their dicks, but Oswald. <laughs> no, mom, it's cool. I totally did. But he doesn't have to use that kind of language. Indeed. A friend of mine um, who was an actress and a, a very well-known actress, and she said, I don't want to play mothers because it means you have no sexuality. And I said, but you had to have sexuality because you have children. <laughs> so you can play mothers. It's okay. You can play mothers. Um, I love playing mothers. I am a mother. And mm -hmm. I love being a mother. And I'm a grandmother. And I love being a grandmother. You know, it's, it's, we're human. Except, you know, I love you, man. I kept thinking, how did J.K. Simmons and I have children that look like that? <laughs> Our children wouldn't have looked like that. I mean, Paul Rudd didn't look like me or J.K. And Andy Samberg didn't look like either one of us. Where'd these kids come from? I know, just, just a second, hold on. Uh, who is this speaking? Well, this is Bob and Ray calling you, Sue, from New York. 
Your number was chosen at random, and you're tonight's lucky phone call. Fern, do you know a Bob and Ray in New York? No. <laughs> they were on television in Boston when I was growing up. So I grew up with Bob and Ray. Um, and so when we did this special, Ray had a giant cold sore, and nobody wanted to look at it. Now they were just totally grossed out by, it was just a cold sore and it was probably nerves, you know? And um, so I, you know, I had no problem with Ray's cold sore. So, uh, cold sore. so um, I, I sort of bonded with Ray and we had a scene to do together where um, we played a married couple. And he really, he, he was so embarrassed about this thing that he really was uncomfortable with other people. So we're doing, we're, we're, he's doing another scene. I'm in the um, set where we're going to do this married couple in bed scene. So I'm lying down on the bed. Joe Dixo, the, the stage manager comes over and he sort of stretches out down at the bottom of the bed. He's lying down there. Ray's finishing up his, his scene and he's walking over to rehearse this one. And he comes over and he sees us and he sort of lies down on the other part of the bed. We're just lying there waiting for them to bring the cameras over and, you know, doing stuff. So we're just, nobody's saying anything. And all of a sudden, something just struck me funny. And I just started to, to laugh a little bit. And it made the bed shake, which made Joe Dixo laugh a little bit, which made Ray <laughs> laugh a little bit. And it was like that game when you put your head on somebody's stomach and you start mm -hmm. to laugh. And the three of us were having a belly laugh that was for the ages. I mean, it was such, we just kept going and going and going and going and going and laughing and laughing and laughing and laughing and laughing. It was wonderful. Yeah, I love those guys. But first, wait. One more look. Goodbye. When I was, uh, First in New York City, um, I, I was thinking about getting a dog. And a friend of mine had gotten, had, had done a movie with Joanne. And um, her, one of her dogs had puppies and, she, and my friend got one of the puppies. So uh, she, my friend called me one day and she said, do you want a puppy? And I said, well, yeah. And uh, she said, well, my dog's brother has just been returned and they don't want to keep this puppy. So they want this puppy to be adopted. So I said, sure. So she said, okay, we'll go up to the Newmans in Westport and we'll pick up the puppy. And I'm going, oh my God, what am I gonna do? How can I, oh, I, I don't know how to deal with that. But I got on the train and I went up to Westport and they could not have been nicer. Just lovely, welcoming, warm. All of a sudden you forgot where you were. And you were just having lunch outside with a family with dogs and chickens and cats and mayhem and just great mayhem, though. Um, and uh, so that's how I met them. And uh, fast forward a few years, there was a, a writer's strike and uh, a director's strike and an actor's strike. And everybody was on strike and there was no work. And um I got a call from Michael Christopher, uh, who was a playwright and a director. And he said, I'm doing a play, um, I'm doing Can Canada um, in Ken in, at uh, Kenyon College in, in Ohio. Do you want to do it with me? Um, Joanne Woodward's starring in it. I went, yes, of course I do. So we all went out to Kenyon College and jo Joanne and I just had a great time. We both brought our dogs. And uh, we would take our dogs to county fairs on our day off and make them watch, you know, sheep herding competitions and stuff like that. It, we just had a great time. Um, and so we were friends ever since. And so when they got, when I got the call about our town, I just thought, oh, thank you. That's really nice. Thank you very much for including me. I, I really appreciate that. 